Hello everyone and welcome back to Football Manager 2018 and this experiment where we're taking a look at what would happen if you gave a player perfect stats. Now I know what you're thinking, on the screen at the moment those stats are not perfect but because of the 200 current ability cap this is what the game has reduced our player to and I don't want to interfere with it. I know that there's a way we can prioritise specific stats but I'm really not interested in doing that. I just want to see how the perfect overall player would get on and this is what the game has allowed us to do. So, so far we've seen him make the switch to Arsenal for about £50 million. He's currently valued at £82 million and has signed a permanent contract with the club. He's made his debut for England, has got two caps there, hasn't yet scored for them. Uh, and he's also won the Europa League, the Community Shield and the European Super Cup. So that's not a bad haul for a player who is only 17 years old. And you have to imagine that there is a lot more to come from the player who was Arsenal's record goal scorer for goals in a season and won the Golden Boot, I think, last season in the Premier League. Uh, certainly in his first season in the Premier League, he won the Golden Boot. So doing very, very well for a player that's only been in football for two years. Now today we're going to jump forward one year and then we're going to jump forward two more years for a total of three years which will take us to five years into his career when he is 20 years old. So it'll be interesting to see how he's developed because by then he should ordinarily be a first team player but he's already there so it'll be interesting to see how much he's developed at such a young age. Before we get into this do drop a like on the video if you are enjoying these experiments. The more you drop likes on it the more people see it the more we're able to grow the channel. Uh, you can also click the links in the description if you're interested in following me on Twitter or supporting the channel um, on Patreon. But let's go forward now one year in time and see how his third full season as a professional has gone. Well, we are now one year further into the future. You can see he's now earning £220,000 a week, valued at £90 million as well. He's also made 14 appearances for England and got 13 goals. So definitely a first-team player for England. You can see his stats not changed even a little bit from the previous year. So the frozen stats are definitely holding on quite well. But interesting to see he's already got a new contract and is worth so much money. Um, if we have a look at his uh, career stats for the season, uh, you can see 26 Premier League goals this season, an increase on the previous year. But his average rating has actually gone down and he's had less player of the matches despite more goals. He also only got 39 goals this season, which is one goal short of the year before. But he did play less games, uh, getting 26 and 38 in the league. 8 in 10 in cup competitions, 5 in 10 in interna in European competitions, uh, and 12 in 10 for England, which is a very nice return. Um, if we have a look at his milestones for the season, and um, we scroll down to the sort of where we left off, left off last time, where they were finish up, runners up in the Europa League. Uh, he won the Premier League Young Player of the Month for August in 2019. Um, a few more team of the weeks in here. Young player for November. One European golden boy, I believe, for the third year in a row. It'll be interesting to see how many times he does win that competition. Um, what else did he achieve here? Uh, named in England's seasonal best 11. Their overall best 11 as well. A uh, few more team of the weeks. Player of the month or young player of the month for February and for April. Top goal scorer in the Premier League. Another golden boot for him and in the team of the year for the Premier League and the Supporters Player of the Year for Arsenal. Uh, named in Arsenal's best 11, forward of the season in the Champions League, so must have done well there. Um, Premier Division, Young Player of the Month for May, and third place in the Golden Shoe, which I think is for Europe. So not a bad little run of events there. If we have a look at the Arsenal Senior Squad schedule, though, we'll get an idea for how he has performed. Uh, Theo Walcott's testimonial, they won 1-0 against Inter Milan, not really sure what that's worth. 2-2 uh, against Chelsea, he did get a couple of goals in that match, lost to Bayern 1-0, uh, but then beat Lyon 3-1, getting one goal from the penalty spot there, beat Liverpool 3-0, scoring in that one. Uh, they did beat Inter Milan, drew with Inter away, 90th minute equaliser, uh, beat Bayern 2-1 with another 89th minute winner. Uh, and then lost to Leon, unable to get a goal. But not many goals for Giancaldo in that stage. They also got through to the quarterfinals, uh, or to the semi-finals, beating Southampton. Giancaldo Jr. with the winning goal in that one. Uh, through in the FA Cup, before losing to Manchester United in the first leg of the Carabao Cup. Um, they then lost to City, but 1-2-1 at home, but I think were knocked out on away goals, I would 
guess from that one. Um, he did score in that game, but it wasn't enough. Struggled in the FA Cup fourth round before coming through 4-0 in the next leg. 5-1, 2 uh, one sorry, in the fifth round. Um, and then in the Champions Cup first match, he did score in a 2-2 draw at home against Monaco in the return match. 3-1, two goals for him, putting them into the Champions League quarterfinals. Not bad at all. Uh, winning in the FA Cup quarterfinals as well, getting two goals there to help send Arsenal through. And then Juventus in the quarterfinal, they won 4-3. He got the opening goal in that game, a very quick start to that match with three goals in seven minutes. Um, absolute epic match, and they did manage to get the win there and lost 2-1. Going out, I think, on away goals there. A shame. Granit Xhaka constantly getting sent off in big matches. So knocked out at the quarterfinal stage. Knocked out of the FA Cup at the semi-final stage. And ultimately struggling to finish the season with any silverware. They also finished fourth. Only just squeaking into the Champions League for next season. So was Arsenal the right team for him to join? I'm not going to interfere with this. If he spends his entire career at Arsenal, he spends his entire career at Arsenal. That will just be that. Um, but it's not necessarily a guarantee of winning trophies. Sorry to any Arsenal fans out there. But at the moment, they are not winning these competitions despite having the top goal scorer in the Premier League, the highest average rating in the Premier League, uh, joint most player of the match awards. Um, not doing well on the assists, though, in the Premier League. Uh, but given he's a out-and-out -out striker and not a cam. That's not too unsurprising. Um, I would be quite interested to see how England got off, though, uh, or got on, rather. Uh, so if we have a look at his England record, I think if we just go to his overview screen uh, and then click on the English button, we can look at the national team's schedule and we will see if we drop back to last season in the Championship qualifiers, 3-1 win there, uh, this going back to last season or the end of last season. Uh, he did get his first goal for England, 3-1 away against Lewandowski. He made his debut in the Romania match, played in this match as well, but then got his first goal against Poland. 2-0 uh, against Ireland, didn't score there. 3-1 against Romania, though, got the goal in that one. Uh, and two more against Andorra. Uh, another one against Macedonia. Two to win the match against Poland. But they then lost 1-0 away to Ireland before 11-0 against Andorra, where he got four goals in a game for England. That's got to be some sort of record. The following year, uh, a 3-0 in a friendly against the Czech Republic. Lost 1-0 to Italy, uh, but then 5-1, another goal there against Georgia in a friendly and losing 2-1 to Belgium. But they've got the champion European Championships come this summer. It kicks off today, actually, their first match against the Czech Republic. Then Holland and Croatia are a very touch tough group there. But hopefully he might be able to win something for England. That would be really nice if he managed to do that. So let's go forward two more years. We're not going to look necessarily as in-depth as we just did for the next two seasons. Um, but we will see how he got on in the European Championship in just a minute. Well, we are now two more years ahead. You can see that Giancaldo Jr. is 20 years old with 36 goals in 37 games for England. He's not far off the scoring record and he's only 20. Now valued at £93 million, which is a huge amount of money, on 230 grand a week for Arsenal. Uh, he wants to win a trophy and is excited at the team's chance in the Champions Cup. That's pretty nice. Uh, let's have a look at how England got on in the European Championship. Well, you can see here the European Championship did not go well. After a 3-0 win where he scored England's first goal at the Championship, they then lost 1-0 to Holland and lost 3-2 to Croatia. Uh, and yet they still managed to make it to the next round. What is that about? How did they make the European Championship second round? It doesn't matter, though. They were crushed 3-0 by Spain. So just the one goal for him. Uh, two goals for him, sorry, in the European Championship. Nothing he could do there to help save England. A really tough run of games in England's defence, but they should have done better and certainly put up more of a fight against Spain. Uh, just looking ahead, you can see he scored a few goals in the uh, European League, which is a new international competition. And the following year, lots and lots of goals, I would imagine, across these games. Fighting with Harry Kane for his starting position, um, but he got a goal there. Got four goals against Lithuania. Got another one there against Kosovo. Um, scored against Albania. Uh, two against Scotland. And then two against Lithuania again. And then so far this season, 
Uh, not doing well. The World Cup group stage has kicked off, and he did score a 93rd minute penalty, so we'll have to see. Much easier group there in the World Cup, Chile, Austria, and Iran. Um, I'm sure they will get through that group, but it's about how well they do. So next episode, we will see how England get in the World Cup. Maybe you can let me know in the comments where you think England will be knocked out. I'm sure they're not going to win it, but at what stage do you think England will get knocked out with Jen Caldo? In the team. Um, let's go back to Jen Keldo and have a look at his uh, career stats for the last two seasons. You can see uh, the following season he did get 39 goals in 55 games, 25 in the league, 3 in cup competitions, 11 in Europe and 8 in uh, England shirts. The following year 35 goals, the number of goals going down which is a bit surprising but 35 goals overall, 13 for England, 4 in Europe, four in the cup competitions, 27 in the league, and eight in friendlies. So not a bad uh, combination of goals being scored there, but not as brilliant as you would expect for a player this good. Uh, if we look at his milestones and drag ourselves all the way back to uh, mid-2020, you can see he was top goal scorer last, uh, where we left off last time, and golden shoe. Broke the record for the youngest player to score in the European Championship. Still getting those records three years in. Uh, and named Arsenal captain in 2020 when he must have been 18 years old. Named Arsenal captain at 18 years old. Plenty of team of the years. Named under-21s captain, which is good for him. I don't think he'd be there for too long, though. Uh, European golden boy for the fourth year in a row. Uh, and named in England's season best team. Plenty more awards coming in in the Premier League. Runners-up in the Carabao Cup. Broke the Arsenal record for the fastest goal, scoring after 10 seconds against Spurs. That's a nice record to hold in such a good game as well. Um, and then there were Premier League winners in 2021. Would you look at that? He finally won a Premier League medal, as did Arsenal. Uh, top goal scorer that season as well. Uh, runners up in the Champions League as well, where he was top scorer. So a very, very good season there. Disappointment that they didn't. Didn't win that, but they were. he was the best player in Europe. They won the Community Shield the following season. Awards kept on coming in for him. Named in the 2021 World Team of the Year and England's seasonal best once more. Uh, more awards in the Premier League. Top goal scorer named in the English Premier Division Team of the Year. Supporters Player of the Year. Uh, best player in Europe and a golden shoe as well. So not a bad period of time for him. Uh, if we have a look at Arsenal... Uh, and their schedule for the senior squad and drop back to that first season. You can see uh, in the Premier League starting off very, very well there. Uh, also in the Champions League as well. Going through in the Carabao Cup, nice win here. Quite a few goals being scored by him in the big games as well. Beat PSG 2-0 at home. Liverpool 2-1 away from home. Um, and then 2-1 against Spurs as well. They lost to PSG there, uh, but crushed Fenerbahce. I think he got a hat-trick in that match in the Champions League, where he did get a lot of goals. 2-0 there as well, comfortably getting through. Beating uh, Man City 2-1 in the Carabao Cup. Jen Caldo Jr. getting the first goal there. Uh, through in the FA Cup. Uh, in the semi-finals, 1-0 against Spurs away from home. Uh, knocked out by Shrewsbury in the FA Cup third round is quite embarrassing. Um, and then in the second leg of the Carabao Cup, they did go through Jenkaldo Jr. scoring in the 84th minute to force extra time where Nabil Fakir won at the match for them and sent them to the final. And in the final, well, actually in the Champions League knockout stages, they won 3-2 against AC Milan there. He got the second goal in that game. And they did lose the Carabao Cup final to Southampton. Zhao Mbolo, or Mbalo with the goal. Um, and then won 3-0 at home. Giancaldo Jr. getting two there. Uh, pushing forward to the quarterfinal stage, they won 1-0 against Monaco. Ozil still in the team. And then drew the second leg 0-0, putting themselves into the semi-finals, where they drew 1-1 with United, getting that away draw. Um, and then winning 2-1 at home, Giancaldo Jr. with the penalty to give them the lead. Danny Welbeck doing the business in extra time, despite being down to 10 men, and putting their place in the final, where they lost 2-1. Giancaldo Jr. unable to get on the score sheet. And they were beaten by Man City two goals to one. A little bit disappointing there that they weren't able to win the competition. But still a very good season for them. And the following year, still in the Champions League, as you would expect, doing very, very well at the start of the season here. Um, not too tough a group there with uh, Rika, Dortmund and Besiktas in their group. They were always going to get through that one. 
Uh, just looking ahead to major cup competitions here, really. They got through in the FA Cup. They must have gone out of the Carabao Cup very, very early. They were beaten by Crystal Palace, which is a bit embarrassing. Um, but they went through in the FA Cup. In the Champions League, being 3-1 away at Real Madrid, Kieran Tierney, Kieran Tierney sent off for Arsenal in that one. Um, but through in the FA Cup, 2-0. And then in the return, they completely knocked out by Real Madrid. 4-2, I think, on aggregate. Disappointment there. And beating 3-1 by Stoke as well. So even more disappointment for them as they were knocked out quite cheaply in the FA Cup. But in the Premier League, they finished second. Five points off the top spot. Um, unfortunately, they weren't able to make up that gap. But the previous season, you can see they did win the league by five points over Manchester City, finally winning the league for the first time in a very, very long time. And it means when we look at Giancaldo Jr.'s uh, profile, he is the captain of Arsenal. Um, if we look at his biography, I think, which is under the Milestones tab, uh, it's already reading so nice. And he's one of, world's football, one of the world football's global superstars. Um, playing for Newcastle, England and Arsenal. 36 goals in 37 games for England is so phenomenal. Um, he's got five winner's medals. He's got the Premier League in 21, the Europa League in 2018, the European Super Cup and two Community Shields. So only really three winner's medals. But he is only 20 years old. He's his club captain. And I think before long, he will be England captain as well. He's probably got another 15 or more years left um, and he, how far can he really go? Maybe you should let me know in the comments how far you think he'll go. Do drop a like on the video though if you're enjoying this experiment. Next time we will go five years ahead and really jump through his career uh, into the sort of the prime of his playing career as well. Um, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to catch that video when it comes out in two days time. Also check out the links in the description to follow me on Twitter or support the channel on Patreon. But until next time, see ya!